Welcome everybody to another edition of the Hurry Up. I'm your host, Adam. Let's go. So, the Giants haven't extended Saquon Barkley. He's going to play. He he may or may not play on the franchise tag. He still hasn't signed that tag yet. It's $10.2 million. And, you know, uh, there's a lot of mixed reviews about it. A lot of Giant fans are like, well, just why don't you play on the tag? It's $10 million. What are you doing? You're an idiot. You know, and then there's some on the other side who are like, well, you know, maybe maybe the Giants are doing it wrong. I'm on this side. Giants drop the ball here. Why? Because this is one of your best players. One of your best players on the field and one of your best players off the field and a team captain and your best player on the team. This is not my words. Those are the words of the media. Okay? A lot of people in the media know the impact and the significance of Saquon Barkley in the offense for the Giants. So the fact that you're not making your star happy, your star player happy, your superstar player happy, let's put that out there, your superstar player happy, it kind of is, uh, it kind of is sad for me. Because to me, the Giants, with this new regime, have done a lot of good things. And there hasn't been too many blemishes yet. I mean, we, we still don't know about all the draft picks, right? They haven't all panned out yet. We don't know what they're going to do. And this year's draft class is still up in the air. We're excited about it, but we have no idea. And Joe Shane's brought in some guys that we hope that will fill in the roster and make this team a contender sooner rather than later. However, this move to me just as, to me is a slap in the face, especially especially to Saquon Barkley, who knows, who knows that he's top five at his position and just saw a guy who is far less talented than he is get 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 more money. And that's Daniel Jones. Whether you like him or not, regardless, if, if you can't see that he is not a top 10 player in the league, of all, there's at least 10 quarterbacks, if not 12, better than him right now. Why do you think they didn't give him the money that Jalen Hurst commanded? But yet here you here we are with the player who arguably is top five in his position. Top five in his position. And not only a team captain, but your best offensive player. And we're like, nope, we're going to give him $10 million. Now, I know I heard about the offers and this, that, that. That's called negotiation. It's called business. Everyone's like, oh, I should have taken the offer. Yeah, hindsight, maybe it's 2020. Maybe you should have taken the offer. Who knows? But at the time, they wanted to test the market. I can't be mad at Saquon Barkley for trying to test the market. I can be mad, however, at Joe Shane for not signing our best offensive player. Regardless of, you want to say, the shelf life of a running back or, you know, uh, the NFL is deemed running backs bad. Guess what? The teams that win in the Super Bowl and the playoffs have strong running games. Period. End of story. That's it. Every look at the teams that have won. They've had a runner that has done something. Even the Los Angeles Rams, you know, got Cam Akers back for the Super Bowl. Okay, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers rode Leonard Fournette to a victory. The a couple years before that, the the, the Chiefs used uh, uh, Jamal Williams or, or, or Mr. Williams uh, on their running back, and they, when they beat the 49ers, right? They had a running back that was predominantly big. Remember, he sat out. That running that same running back sat out during COVID. And then they drafted Clyde Edwards Hilaire. And Pacheco. Just because guys do it doesn't necessarily mean you have to keep the trend going. Especially with a guy like Barkley, who has done a million things off the field. He's been an ambassador to the game. He's been an ambassador to the Giants. Heck, he's been the face of the franchise for the last five years. And he sees. As much as he likes Daniel Jones as his buddy and friend, he knows, okay, Daniel, you're not as good as me at your position. I'm better than you. I should be getting paid like everybody else. Oh, well, he got injured. He had one, he had two injury seasons. One that he still ended up with a thousand yards. The other injury, uh, was the knee injury, which guys don't come back from as easily. He played through it, even though he wasn't mentally there to do it. He could have easily taken two years off. He, he slogged through it. He did it and, and he did his best he could recover from that knee injury. And then last year, in the first, you know, what, 10 or 10, 10 to 12 games, he was the man. He was getting carries, 100 yards, you know, breaking off long runs, has 10 touchdowns. You know, yeah, he got a little nicked up here in the season, but so did the quarterback. So my point is, is that, the Giants, to me, if you want to believe that, if you want me to believe that you're being a winning team, pay your guys. Who cares? You pay Daniel Jones, and he hasn't done buckets in the season, right? Buckets in his career, okay? It doesn't even have a Pro Bowl to his name. 
Barkley has a Pro Bowl and an All-Pro to his name, and not to mention an Offensive Rookie of the Year trophy. Okay, those accolades are nothing. You, I mean, people don't want to look at stats or resumes or whatever. They only want to look at it when it's convenient. Well, guess what? Barkley is that player. He is that good. You put him on any other team in the in the NFL, and he's still he's still putting up big time numbers, big time numbers. So I don't want to hear about this. Oh well, you know, it's, I don't think it's necessarily Daniel Jones's fault per se, but I will say this: they chose to go with Daniel. That's what they did. They did, they did this year. They did it towards the end of last year. And we'll see if that investment pays off. But Barkley's going to be ready. I'm not worried about him not being ready. I wouldn't be surprised if he might try to hold out a few games to show you, hey, listen, man, you think that you're, you can function without me? Okay. I mean, the guy's got an endorsement deal, so he's probably not worried or not hurting financially. Okay. He would like to get paid and he wants to get paid $22 million. I don't know why the Giants just didn't, just didn't give him the bag. Why don't you give them the back? Oh, well, you know, the, the Giants stood firm and packed, blah, blah, blah. Give me a break. They, they restructured Leonard Williams to get guys into the cap. They cut Kenny Galladay. They had 14 million. Don't tell me they're cap strapped. Okay. There's Houdini's out there. Houdini's when it comes to the cap. Look at the Eagles, man. They putting everybody under their cap. Everybody goes under their cap. They find a way to get AJ Brown and this guy and sign the quarterback and all this crap. Well, the reason the Eagles don't have their running back is because they were going with a running back by committee. They want to do that because they're running predominantly heavy with the quarterback. The Giants, I don't think, should do the running heavy with the quarterback. As much as the quarterback has had yardage last year, I think they should have kept, I think they should have rewarded Saquon Barkley for all his hard, they did that with Daniel Jones. Basically, the, the, the owner comes out and goes, hey, we did this guy dirty, blah, 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 blah. We're going to give him this, right? And the guy hasn't done anything, had one winning season in his entire year here, not even a Pro Bowl, and it's an average season at best. At best. You can tell me whatever you want to tell me with your, your, your blinders on, but across the league, it's an average season. And he got paid. And Barkley has more than an average season, 1,300 yards, you know, a couple hundred yards in the receiving game, and 10 touchdowns, right? And 10 touchdowns. So, but we want to pay, we want to pay a guy who's been injured in his career, you know, in Daniel, who hasn't eclipsed any marks of being in a Pro Bowl, being on endorsement deals, making money outside of, of this, yet, yet Barkley, our best player for the last five years that he's been on the field, you know, I know that he's been injured, and yet, yet in 2021 he had that that year. I can't blame him for that. You try coming back from an ACL and tell me how you're going to do, okay? He came back after that year. They gave him the extension, and he knew it, and he balled out. But we don't want to. We don't. $10 million. Oh, everyone's like, well, he should have taken the deal. Well, yeah. Well, he looks at Christian McCaffrey and goes, how come that guy who's injured and far less talented than me is getting the bag? You remember? Barkley was the second overall pick in the draft. Second overall pick in the draft. That means a lot. That means a lot to him. So for the Giants, I feel they really should have paid him. They probably should have done it like this. This is how I would have handled it. I would have franchise tagged Daniel. Now people are like, oh, well, you want to cut up the $42 million. Who cares? You would have put the franchise tag on Daniel. You would have said, listen, we got till July to get you extended. We can figure some things out. But we need to get Saquon Barkley signed, who's a better player overall and can help whatever quarterback that comes in if they decide to move on from Daniel. Daniel's not going to help. Daniel doesn't help Saquon Barkley. Saquon Barkley helps Daniel Jones. Period, point blank, flat out. And if you think that you're going to bring in another guy to have that same impact, good luck. And if Barkley decides to hold out for a couple games of the year, I don't blame him. I don't blame him. Because this is his team that he slogged through through a bad offensive line. The same reasons you gave Daniel the money, bad offensive line, we beat him up, all that. The same thing can be said for, for Saquon Barkley, who's been nothing but loyal, hasn't come out and said anything, hasn't criticized ownership management, has dealt with all the quarter, the, 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 the uh, regime changes. Remember, that guy's been through three regime changes in his time there. And not a, not a, not a word was he said, you know? So. That's how I feel about it. We'll see how this gets done. By the way, he can't get anything more than the $10.2 million unless they give him a new contract for a year. And if you're thinking about the trade route option, if he does get traded, that team has to pay him for a year at least more money than they're getting. And maybe they'll have an under the, under the table type of agreement where they will, well, they'll extend him after the year's over. 
Anyway, this has been another edition of the Hurry Up. Hope you like what you hear. Hit that like button, subscribe. Anytime I go live or make a video so you can get notifications, I'm out.